fights five. This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Good morning, everyone. I'm David Muir reporting from ABC News headquarters in New York, where we are just learning at this hour that Malaysian Airlines has now confirmed that it has lost contact with one of its planes. Malaysia Airlines has lost contact of MH17, Flight 17, from Amsterdam. We believe it was en route to Kuala Lumpur. And if this is the case, it was a Boeing 777, and there are pictures coming in at this hour, and we want to show you from that part of the world. Pictures from Ukraine, of course, a lot of focus in recent months on Ukraine and the Russian border there. These are the pictures coming in at this hour. The plume of smoke, as you can see, rising there, reportedly believed to be smoke from the crash of this jet, although Malaysia's airlines will not confirm that their jet has, in fact, crashed, simply saying at this hour that they lost contact with MH17, that would be Flight 17. Of course, a lot of people are immediately going to say this is Malaysian Airlines, remembering that they just had that catastrophe with their other plane that disappeared. That was 131 days ago since MH370 was lost, vanishing uh, in midair. Of course, so many passengers uh, on that flight as well. This particular flight this morning that we're talking about had 280 passengers, it's believed. 15 crew members and again you're looking at pictures right there that plume of smoke on the horizon that is from Ukraine uh, not far from the Russian border where there has been so much attention in particular the last 24 hours about Russian troops assembling in greater numbers on that border the president in fact talking about the escalating uh, conflict within the last 24 hours but at this point Malaysian Airlines simply confirming that they have lost contact with that flight I want to bring in our chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz who's watching this with me at this hour and Martha this is an extremely troubling headline particularly for an airline that has been in the news in the last couple of months it is indeed and exactly as you said David everyone will focus on that and how that happened and if this plane has indeed crashed how that happened particularly and the volatile border as you spoke about there and whether it is possible uh, that somehow that plane was brought down but all of that will have to be looked at uh, whether or not it is even possible to bring a, a plane down there on the border uh, with some sort of missile and what that range would be if that is possible but right now uh, we are just waiting word from Malaysian Airlines whether they believe that plane crashed or whether it has simply gone missing. Martha stick with us here as we're on with live breaking coverage on ABC News here of a flight that has gone missing according to Malaysia Airlines they've lost contact with it but of course as we've been showing you the pictures coming in uh, a lot of speculation that those uh, plumes of smoke you saw moments ago are, in fact, the Boeing 777 after crashing in Ukraine. I want to bring in Kirit Radia, our correspondent in Moscow, who has more at this hour. Kirit, what are you learning? Yeah, hi, David. Uh, that's right. Right now, we're, this plane is, is said to have gone down right around the heart of where all that fighting has been going on in eastern Ukraine. Uh, you may remember that the Ukrainian military has been fighting against those pro-Russian separatists for the last few months, and the battle has really been heating up over the past few weeks. In just the last few days, the Ukrainians accused the Russians of firing into their territory and downing a Ukrainian military plane. So all of this is going to really complicate any sort of rescue effort between uh, the Ukrainian authorities and those uh, pro-Russian separatists. Kirit, as you know, there are going to be a lot of questions about whether or not this flight was in fact brought down. We are using extreme caution in even exploring that possibility. But uh, as you know, the president here in this country in the last 24 hours talking about increasing the sanctions on Russia, given uh, the number of troops that have continued to grow there on the Ukrainian border. Uh, and you're well aware of the tensions growing at the border. And tell us more uh, about reports that uh, military plane, as you mentioned, had been shot down uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. Right, and this isn't actually even the first one. There have been reports of this over the past couple of weeks. There have been a couple planes that, that the Ukrainians have accused the Russians of shooting down. Some videos were posted online just yesterday, uh, which we, of course, have not confirmed at this time, uh, that appear to show uh, some uh, rockets being fired from Russian territory into Ukraine. Uh, and this is one of the reasons uh, that the Obama administration imposed those sanctions yesterday. They've been accusing the Russians of arming uh, those pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine, providing them financing and support. And, of course, it's far too early to say whether or not that is, in fact, what happened here. It will be a possible... Uh 
element of this investigation clearly in its early stages. I want to bring in our aviation expert, John Nance, who's been listening to this conversation as well. And John, from, from an aviation standpoint, when you, when you read this tweet from Malaysia Airlines saying that they have lost contact with MH17, and then you see the pictures like this, uh, what's going through your yes. mind? Well, that uh, there's something uh, very terrible happened, regardless of whether it was brought down by uh, some other force or whether it was something internal. This is an incredibly reliable airplane. The Triple Seven's been involved in a number of things lately, but it's only because there are a lot of them out there, as far as we can see. This aircraft appears to have been traveling at about 33,000 feet, just under 500 knots. That's about 570 miles an hour as it got over to you know, western Ukraine. We don't have a trace after that. Uh, so uh, there's no indication, for instance, of a decline in altitude that would see uh, or that would be enable us to say it was a slow descent or anything of that nature. Usually when an airplane is on the ground with smoke like that after cruising at high altitude, we've got something catastrophic that occurred. But you're absolutely right in the caution. It could be, conceivably, even though it's never happened before, something that is internal to the airplane. Uh, but more than likely, uh, this is something uh, unprecedented. And John, I have to say, the difference this time, obviously, we're seeing, you know, within a short amount of time, the smoke, the plume of smoke there on the horizon. And it was an image like this one that the world was waiting to see after the last flight. 131 days ago, I mentioned, it was the other Malaysian Airlines flight, flight 370, that was lost. And John, still no trace of that plane. No, absolutely no trace of that plane, and of course we still have the speculation of whether or not that aircraft, the Malaysia 370, was hijacked or whether there was some mechanical cause. Uh, I don't think there's much evidence uh, that would lead us to the mechanical side of the uh, thing, and of course uh, the authorities investigating that have pretty much said that they uh, are, are pretty certain that, um, that it was a hijacking of one sort or another. In this particular case, uh, we, we have an airplane that came out of the sky, and it's too early to know what circumstance it was in terms, again, of whether it was a slow descent and then an impact, whether there was an emergency on the airplane or whether it came apart in flight for some reason. And when you talk about the type of jet, John, this is a Boeing, we're talking about a 777 in both of these cases? That's correct, a 777, which is really one of the best airplanes flying long distance routes over the planet. Uh, its, its record has been superlative. Uh, it's uh, been in, in operation now, uh, I guess, close to 20 years. And the, um, the rate of dispatch reliability, as they call it, is, is just superlative. It's one of the best airplanes that ever has ever been launched. Now, we've had a few incidents and crashes in the last year, but several of those have absolutely nothing to do with the airplane itself. It had to do with other factors. Uh, the Asiana crash on J uh, July 6th of uh, 2013, for instance. That is aviation expert John Nance with us live. And for those viewers just joining us, you are watching ABC News breaking coverage of what's believed to be a plane crash on the Ukrainian border uh, with Russia, not far from that border in Ukraine. At this hour, it's believed to be a Boeing 777 that was en route from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur a Malaysian Airlines flight, and of course there are going to be a lot of people who immediately remember that it was uh, Malaysian Flight 370 that was lost, uh, you know, about 130 days ago now, 131 to be exact. Again, this airline dealing with just a disastrous headline, uh, just about 10 of noon here on a Thursday morning. That plume of smoke you're looking at is early video coming into us from Ukraine at this hour, and as you heard Martha Raditz, our global affairs correspondent, report a short time ago, uh, one of these early theories of course, it is very early, and we use extreme caution when even discussing this, is, is talking about the military buildup on that border. Kirit Radi reporting that military planes, there have been military planes that have been uh, reported on, that have been brought down by those troops assembling on the border. And so one of the main questions in these early minutes after this disaster is now breaking around the world will be whether or not that had anything to do with the fact that this jet came down. I want to bring in our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, who has been covering the story of the other. Malaysian Airlines flight, flight 370, and there was so much attention in that case on the cockpit and whether or not there was any foul play that led to that. In this case here, uh, we have an international dispute on this border that will come into play. Absolutely. The difference here, though, David, is they'll be able to find the black box, the plane. They know what happened to it. They know where it is, and the black box will tell a lot as to what happened, uh, as Mr. John Nance was pointing out, whether it gradually lost uh, altitude and went down or went down because of some catastrophic event. That black box will be a very important 
important piece of evidence once investigators get to that crash scene. And Brian, as you know, when we cover plane crashes, as horrible as they are, this is the image that almost comes immediately. And this is what we didn't have in the plane That's crash, right. obviously, before. Disappeared long ago, and there were so many theories about where it went down and then changing the location uh, almost from day to day. In this case, we're seeing the smoke almost immediately. You can see the people uh, yes. gathered there just stunned by the plume of smoke off there in the distance. And so, as you mentioned, Brian, they'll be able to get to the scene fairly quickly. And even though we're being very careful about uh, any possibility that this could be related to the military buildup, really on both sides, on the Ukrainian side and on the Russian side, um, but it will be a theory that is quickly pursued. Well, that theory, plus the fact that two Malaysian Air 777s have now gone down somehow. Uh, so those are both coincidental uh, pieces of information, but both will be tracks that investigators will look at in terms of what actually happened here. Is there a connection to what happened with the earlier flight, or is this related to what's going on in that uh, troubled region? They lost contact with the plane over Ukrainian airspace at about 33,000 feet. And as you point out, lost contact are the, are, is the careful wording that That's we right. have received from Malaysia Airlines. In fact, the tweet I'll read to folks at home listening in now as we continue our live coverage. The tweet was Malaysia Airlines has lost contact contact of MH17 from Amsterdam. The last known position was over Ukrainian airspace, and they simply add more details to follow. I want to take our viewers at home to an image of the actual plane. This is believed to be the actual plane again. It was a Boeing 777. It was en route from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, and there will be a lot of talk about this particular jet. It's a 777. It was the same kind of aircraft uh, that went uh, missing 131 days ago, obviously under very different circumstances. Uh, uh, it's an aircraft used heavily by this particular airline and, as you know, the Boeing name known around the world and, in fact, the 777 uh, known around the world. And, and, John Nance, I want to bring you back in because you talked about the flying record of this particular jet. Uh, it has a, a pretty healthy record. It does indeed, uh, from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, uh, up until last year, the only accident had been a, uh, a situation in, uh, in uh, London Heathrow when they tried to push the throttles out in the last portion of a landing and they would come up because of ice and fuel. That's been the only problem up until, as I say, the, the uh, Asiana crash in San Francisco, which was uh, very definitely uh, related to the pilot's training uh, and not to the jet itself. And then, of course, the disappearance of 370, which is, I say, is widely believed to be a hijacking and nothing wrong with the airplane, although that's certainly not definitive at this point. We had yet another incident, although it, certainly nobody got hurt, uh, with a 777 United Airlines landing, uh, making an unscheduled emergency landing at Midway the other day. We don't have the full story on that, but some indications from the passengers tend to lead us to believe that, uh, that maybe it was more serious than has been stated in terms of progressive loss of equipment from maybe a smoldering uh, fire or, or uh, a overheat in the electronics department. Those are the only earmarks that uh, would go with the 777 uh, to say that there's anything that might be a threat to the aircraft, and, and that's literally nothing. Uh, there's been absolutely nothing shown to be generic with this fleet. Oh, just stunning images of the smoke there off in the distance. John Nancer, aviation expert, stick with us here as we continue our live coverage. We're just now hearing for the first time from Boeing airplanes. Uh, they have tweeted a moment ago, and this is from their verified account. Obviously, we are very careful in breaking news situations uh, to go off of Twitter, but this is a verified account in Boeing confirming at this hour that we are aware of reports on MH17. We're gathering more information, and so Boeing uh, acknowledging that something catastrophic has happened. And you're looking right there at the map, of course. We have been reporting so much here uh, on World News and across ABC News on that building conflict on the Ukrainian border with Russia. In fact, it was just 24 hours ago we heard from President Obama about increasing sanctions on Russia to try to uh, destabilized to take down uh, the building effort at the border and the tensions that we have witnessed uh, both uh, the images and the rhetoric in the last couple of weeks in particular and I want to bring back in Martha Raditz our chief global affairs correspondent who is monitoring all of this from our Washington bureau and Martha I cannot remember a case in which we were talking about a passenger plane possibly and again this is very early but a passenger plane possibly being involved in um, what could be uh, the result of the military buildup there on a border. 
I, I, I certainly can't remember either. I can certainly remember uh, cases when planes were accidentally shot down. Uh, the U.S. shot down an Iranian airliner, I believe was in 1988, mistakenly, and there was a buildup around there uh, when that happened, I believe. But it's certainly something you don't think about. I mean, we all fly over that area. I just recently did it myself at altitude. One of the things they're going to look at here, uh, and John Nance can probably speak to this, is what altitude the plane was. Uh, whether it was 10 to 15,000 feet, whether it was 33,000 feet, because then they can really look at the possibilities of what might have brought this plane down, and I think that's going to be something they look at very, very quickly. But Martha, you were just telling me in recent days that when you fly into situations like this, and in fact some of your reporting from the Middle East uh, as of late, that you, you your flight is often rerouted, and, and I have seen this myself. Uh, and you've got to wonder, with this being explored, this potential possibility this plane might have been brought down, even accidentally, um, that, that there are going to be questions asked about how it was allowed to fly over a border with such an intense military buildup. I think that's a good question, but it probably goes back to what you said, David. It's something they hadn't really thought about or did not think was a possibility and may, in fact, not have happened. But when I just recently flew into Israel because of the rocket fire, because of the long-range rockets that are being launched out of Gaza, when I flew into Tel Aviv, we took a very unusual route. I've obviously flown into that area uh, quite frequently, but we went way north came back around and, and stayed away from any potential rocket fire. But they have not had random rocket fire on that border of, of Ukraine and Russia, certainly not involving passenger jets. And again, if you're at altitude, uh, 33,000 feet, there's a limited range that could actually hit a jet like that. Yeah, and as you point out, Martha, there was no rocket fire that precipitated this, uh, so there was no warning signs that this possibly could have happened. Uh, as you know, I want to bring our viewers up to date at this hour who are tuning in just before noon here in the East Coast. This was a plane that was believed to have taken off around 6.14 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the flight had left over five hours ago, and you're now looking at pictures coming in from Ukraine at this hour, the smoke billowing off in the distance. It's believed the jet went down there in Ukraine. Take a look at the route map that we've been able to put together uh, just now. A and you can see the border there with Ukraine and Russia. That's where the military buildup, and, and the yellow line there is the route map. That's where the plane is believed to have gone. Uh, and then you're seeing the smoke, of course, from people who have simply recorded this, uh, perhaps with their smartphone devices, which have brought us uh, so many visuals now in modern times as we cover horrific events like, like this one. Uh, I want to bring you up to speed, though, again, on what we believe this is. You are uh, looking at the smoke from what's believed to be a Boeing 777. It was a Malaysian Airlines flight that went uh, missing. They said that they had lost contact with MH17 from Amsterdam. The last known position was over Ukrainian airspace. So they have confirmed that they last had contact with that jumbo jet over Ukraine. Uh, and Boeing also confirming at this hour that they have word that one of their jets is now uh, missing and that they're investigating this too. Of course, with the pictures already coming in from the ground, it's believed there was, in fact, a crash. And the major question now is what led to that crash. Our entire team is assembling here. My partner, George Stephanopoulos, will join us with the coverage here shortly. And, of course, we'll be back on with breaking news and a complete report on world news. So stay tuned right here on ABC. Be right back. Everything great starts from something small. Just ahead, sending a message why Davenport's mayor says no to a major development proposal and why it could go through anyway. Good morning, you're watching News 8 at 11. Also up next, harvesting Iowa's gold, where you can get your first taste.